Greetings and welcome. The greenhouse effect is a crucial phenomenon that is essential for sustaining life on Earth. Without greenhouse effect, our planet would be very, very cold to support the diverse forms of life. So why should you worry about the greenhouse effect? What are the impacts of greenhouse effect that cause an increase in Earth's temperature? Today we'll explore the processes behind the greenhouse effect and its impact on the environment. Before we learn about the greenhouse effect, let's go to know the electromagnetic wave spectrum and its wavelengths. We'll also discover information about heat waves which is commonly known as infrared radiation. Okay, the Earth's surfaces such as land, water and ice receive solar radiations from the sun. But all of its radiations do not reach them directly. Some solar radiations are reflected back into space by clouds and the Earth's surfaces. Others are absorbed by the atmosphere and the Earth's surfaces. And a part of these radiations are scattered by the atmosphere. So, what are the various kinds of solar radiations? Do you know which energies are emitted by the sun? The sun emits visible light and other types of electromagnetic radiations. Solar radiation is actually a general term for the electromagnetic radiations emitted by the sun. These radiations include gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet light, visible light, infrared light, microwaves, and radio waves. Electromagnetic radiation is a form of energy that travels in waves and has both electric and magnetic fields. It consists of a wide range of wavelengths. For example, gamma rays have very short wavelengths and high energy, while radio waves are of long wavelengths but have low energy. Now, the question is, among these energies, which energies actually reach the Earth? Okay, let us know different types of solar radiations that reach the Earth's atmosphere. All the radiations emitted by the sun do not reach the Earth's atmosphere. Most of the solar radiations that reach the Earth's atmosphere have the wavelength from 100 nanometer to 1 millimeter. The spectrum of solar radiations reaching the Earth atmosphere can be roughly divided into ultraviolet, visible light, near infrared, and infrared. Ultraviolet have the wavelengths from 100 to 400 nanometer. Visible light have the wavelength from 400 to 700 nanometer. Near infrared 700 to 3000 nanometer, and infrared radiations have the wavelengths from 3000 nanometer to 1 millimeter. So what makes the infrared radiations so unique in its characteristics? Infrared radiation. Three main features of infrared radiations are number one, it is a type of electromagnetic radiation that has wavelength longer than those of visible light. So, it is invisible to human eye. Number two, infrared radiations can be felt as heat on the skin because it carries energy and can increase the temperature of objects that absorb it. Number three, infrared radiation is emitted by all objects that have some heat such as the sun, fire and even humans. Human body have temperature of 37 degrees centigrade. So our body also emit infrared radiations. The most important part of today's discussion is that the earth also emit 
some radiations, some infrared radiation. We have learned that infrared radiation manifests as heat waves. We have understood the absorption of the solar radiation by both the Earth's surfaces and the atmosphere. This includes infrared radiation, ultraviolet radiation, as well as the visible light. The Earth and its atmosphere releases a portion of the absorbed energy back into space in the form of infrared radiation, which is actually a form of heat. Beyond oxygen and nitrogen, the atmosphere encompasses a variety of gases. Atmospheric gases like water vapor, carbon dioxide and methane play a role in absorbing the Earth's infrared radiation. These radiations are re-emitted in all the directions and some of these radiations come back to the Earth again. So, the heat is entrapped within the Earth's atmosphere by these gases and this phenomenon is known as the greenhouse effect. So greenhouse gases are gases in the atmosphere that absorb and emit the infrared radiation, which is a type of energy. Without these greenhouse gases, the temperature of the earth would be very low, especially at night. They keep the earth warm by trapping some of the heat that the sun radiates to the earth's atmosphere. This phenomenon of greenhouse effect is very, very essential for life on Earth. So, is greenhouse effect bad for us? Definitely not. It is beneficial to all living organisms on the Earth. The greenhouse effect is a natural phenomenon that keeps the Earth warm and habitable. And these gases act like a blanket that prevents the heat from escaping back into space. Without the greenhouse effect, the earth would be too cold for life to exist. However, human activities such as burning fossil fuels, deforestation and farming have increased the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere which enhances the greenhouse effect and cause the Earth's temperature to rise. And this is called global warming. Global warming causes climate change and it has many negative impacts on the environment and human health. According to NASA, the average surface temperature on Earth is approximately 15 degrees centigrade. Without greenhouse gases, the temperature of the earth would be minus 18 degrees centigrade. But the planet's average temperature is rising due to the enhanced greenhouse effect. The 10 hottest years across the recorded human history have all occurred since 2010. Since the 1800s, human activities have been the main driver of climate change, mainly due to the burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil and gas. Burning fossil fuels generates greenhouse gas emissions that act like a blanket wrapped around the earth trapping the sun's heat and rising temperatures. The last decade that is 2011 to 2020 was the warmest on record and each of the last four decades has been warmer than any previous decade since 1850. So, why is it called greenhouse effect? First of all, we should know what a greenhouse is. A greenhouse is a house or structure to regulate climatic conditions such as temperature and humidity for the cultivation of plants. A greenhouse usually has a roof and walls made of transparent materials such as glass, plastic or films. The enclosure of a greenhouse allows visible light to enter and be absorbed by the plants and soil. The plants and soil 
then emit the absorbed heat energy as infrared radiation. Greenhouse then absorb that infrared radiation emitting some of it back into the greenhouse and thus keeping the greenhouse warm even when the temperature outside is lower. In 1827, Joseph Fourier, a French mathematician and physicist, explained why Earth's average temperature is approximately 15 degrees centigrade. Because the two processes are similar, the name greenhouse effect was coined to describe four years explanation. Greenhouse effect is essential for life on Earth as it keeps the planet warm enough for liquid water to exist. The increase in Earth's temperature due to enhanced greenhouse effect is called global warming which affects the climate and the environment in various ways. Global climate change is the long-term changes in the Earth's climate due to natural and human factors. These changes include rising temperatures, melting ice, rising sea levels, change in rainfall patterns, and more. Climate change affects the environment, the economy, and the society in various ways. Some of the impacts of climate changes are more frequent and intense heat waves, droughts, floods, storms, and wildfires, loss of biodiversity and habitat such as coral reefs, forests, wetlands, and polar regions, sea level rise and coastal erosion threatening millions of people living in low-lying areas, reduced crop yield and food security affecting the livelihood and nutrition of farmers and consumers, increased risk of diseases, malnutrition and mental stress especially for vulnerable groups such as children, women, elderly and poor. Migration and displacement of people from the areas affecting the climate-related disaster, conflicts, and resource scarcity. Okay. Some of the main greenhouse gases are water vapor, the most abundant and variable greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. It is produced by evaporation from oceans, lakes, rivers, and plants. It also forms clouds which are responsible for reflection and absorption of solar radiation. Carbon dioxide, the most important human-made greenhouse gas, and this is responsible for global warming. It is emitted by burning fossil fuels, deforestation, and other activities. Methane the second most important human-made greenhouse gas. It is emitted by agriculture, livestock, landfills, coal mining, oil and gas production, and other sources. Nitrous oxide, a greenhouse gas that is emitted by fertilizers, fossil fuels, combustion, industrial processes, and wastewater management. Ozone, a greenhouse gas that is formed by chemical reaction between oxygen and other pollutants. Then the fluorinated gases. A group of synthetic greenhouse gases that are used in various industrial applications such as refrigeration, air conditioning, aerosol and electrical equipments. They include chlorofluorocarbons, hydrochlorofluorocarbons, hydrofluorocarbons, parfluorocarbons, sulfur hexafluoride, and nitrogen trifluoride. They have very high global warming potential. Okay. 
Climate change is a global challenge that requires urgent and collective action from all countries and sectors. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change UNFCC, is the main international treaty that aims to stabilize greenhouse gas concentration and prevent dangerous interference with the climate system. The Paris Agreement adopted in 2015 is the landmark agreement under the UNFCCC that sets the goal for limiting global warming to well below 2 degrees centigrade, preferably to 1.5 degrees centigrade compared to pre-industrial levels. To achieve this goal, countries have pledged to reduce their greenhouse gas emission and enhance their adaptation and resilience to climate impact. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change or IPCC is a scientific body by the World Meteorological Organization and the United Nations Environment Program. The main activity of the IPCC is the preparation of reports assessing the state of knowledge of climate change. Thanks for watching. I trust the video probed helpful for you.